Well, welcome to Belong Church in 2021. And if you've been following along with us, and if this isn't your first time, you'll notice that it's been a couple of weeks since we delivered a message. And even in the last message that we talked about, you will hear me talk about that there are struggles that I'm personally going through. And we were we were talking about the word faith for so many um, weeks in a row. And if you don't get those, I would encourage you to go back and look at those. But even in the last message, I mentioned that I also am going through a struggle and just being transparent with you, and that there are things that I'm also praying and believing and asking God for an answer. And it's sometimes really difficult when you don't see the answer yet to the things that you're praying for. And, you know, I, I'm just trying to be as pr- transparent as possible to let you know that you're not the only one who goes through that. And so as a result, I had some personal issues, um, family issues that we decided to put um, on hold for recording for a little bit. But here we are, we're back. And if you didn't hear those messages about faith, I would encourage you to go back and listen to them because didn't intend to them I didn't intend for them to be so many in explaining it, but it's a pretty big topic on the word faith. And just to give you a snippet of it, if you don't, if you didn't catch that, let me just tell you that faith is like this ethereal word to me, or it was, I should say, something I'd heard all my life, just have faith, or if you have faith, it'll work out, or, you know, all these different words, and I just created this, like a cloud of what I thought it meant, but it really was nothing like, like if I'm trying to grasp a hold of it to explain it, it's kind of like, it's really difficult, And I think most of us find ourselves in that spot. And so what I did is I looked at the actual word in the Bible, where it's the literal word that was translated from Greek into our understanding. And it it has this exact meaning that means to be persuaded and to have confidence. And we began to look at how that applies to us. And it really, really changed how I look at things. But it really turns into being, can I be persuaded that God is in control when it doesn't look like God is in control? Can I be confident in God's going to come through for me when it looks pretty bad? And just being perfectly honest, that's where I was at the last time we recorded. And now God has done these amazing things that I will share at some point in the future. But it's awesome that I think... I think it's awesome, I should say, that I brought many of you along the journey with me. And many people, I said, you have a front row seat to my life to see that I actually believe what I'm preaching. And so here we are a few weeks later, and I didn't actually get to finish up the message on faith. There's probably one more message coming, but this being the first message of the new year, I really, really wanted to get this one out. And of course, next week is Valentine's, so we've got a special message for Valentine's. But most likely the next week, we're going to wrap the whole faith thing up. But if you didn't watch those again, uh, not for self-promoting reasons, but I encourage you, because this is where the rubber meets the road, to go back and listen to those. Go back and watch them and, and invite somebody to come along that journey with you and to, to understand and get this understanding to come and rise up inside of you of what it's like to have this faith walk. Well, today we're looking at a story that Jesus told, and they're called parables. So it's not something that actually happened, But it's something that is going to happen in this particular um, instance. Some of the parables were just stories that he made up to illustrate a truth to protect those other. So it's not an exact person, but, you know, it's like the old saying, the the names have been changed to protect the innocent or the guilty or whatever it would be. You know, that just cracks me up. So Jesus kind of had the the start on that a long time ago. So he created these parables. But this one we're looking at today in Matthew 25 is actually a foreshadowing. So Jesus says, hey, this hasn't happened yet, but one day this is going to happen. And every one of us are going to give an account. And he told this story about the three servants. So I'm not going to read it with you. You can go read through the, the, the verse if you want to. Again, it's in Matthew chapter 25. But these three servants were were tasked by the master and given. One was given five talents, and talent in the Old Testament, I'm sorry, in the New Testament, was a measure of money. So it was a, a, like the equivalent of five bags of gold or whatever, but it was a value. It was like we would say a dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill. A talent was a measure of money. 
So the one was given five talents, the second one was given two talents, and the third was given one. Now, the most interesting thing in this story to me, I shouldn't say the most, but one of the most, is that it's not really about the amount that was given, but really what they were going to do with it. So the first one he gave five to, second he gave two, and the third he gave one. And he told them to go out and to do business and to, to work it out and to invest it and to, to make something happen with it. And then it says that years later he came back and says, all right, I'm calling you into account. What did you do with what I gave you? So the first one of the five talents came back to him and said, Master, you gave me five And I worked really hard, and I I got you another five. So now here's ten. And the master says, wow, that's awesome. He said these words, well done, my good and faithful servant. You you may have heard that phrase before because it's one that's talked about a lot in the church world. And so he said, now enter into my rest, but well done. You did good. So he turned to the second one that had two talents, and he says, hey, what did you do? And I, I just see the master like really excited, like, hey, how'd you do? Tell me, tell me, tell me. And he goes, you gave me two, and, and I was able to work really hard, and I doubled it. And here's four. Here, here's two plus two, and here's four. Here you go. He's like, wow, you did good. Now, he wasn't saying, why didn't you give me 10 like the last guy? He was looking at what he did with what he had. He goes, wow, that's awesome. Same thing. Well done. My good faithful servant. Turn to the third one. Can't you see the same excitement? It's like, okay, let's see how you did. And he goes, well, you see what happened was I knew, and he started making all these excuses. And he says, so I was scared. So I just went and buried it in the ground. And now that you were coming back, I went and dug it up. So here's your one. Now, we might look at that and say, well, you weren't as adventurous. You weren't as entrepreneurial as the other two. So, you know, hey, at least you didn't lose the one. But it made the master really, really angry. He says, you've done wickedly. And he said, I'm going to take what you had and give it to the others. And Jesus says, the same thing's going to happen one day when you stand before my heavenly father. See, all of us were given a measure All of us was given a gift. All of us were given the ability to do something with our lives. And in fact, one of the things that we say at this church, and we got it from Church of the Highlands with Pastor Chris, says the two greatest days in your life are the day you were born, number two, the day you discover why you were born. Why are you here? What has been entrusted to you that the world needs? that those around you need? What is it that God has said, here's this what I've entrusted you with. And then one day he's going to come back. He goes, oh, church, I entrusted you with this. Tell me what you do. But now the interesting thing I heard recently about this particular story, this particular parable, is these aren't gifts, but choices. See, they went out and worked, or in the case of the one, didn't work. They weren't just gifts that, wow, we're great, we're wonderful. Look how gifted I am that I was able to do this. But it was choices that they made. See, each one of them was entrusted with something. What are you going to do with what you're entrusted with? So let me draw my own circle. What am I going to do? with what I'm entrusted with. And I would ask you the same thing. What is it you're doing? What is it you're going to do with what you're entrusted? Let me say it another way. What are you going to give for an answer one day when the master asks you, what choices did you make with what I gave you? Tell me. What do you have for me? If he gave you five, are you able to say, look, I worked really hard, and here's five more. Here's ten. I, I had two. and I mean, I did the best with my two. Here's another two. I had one, and I did the best. Here's another one. Here's two. I'm firmly convinced that in this parable of Jesus, had that one said, I doubled it, just like the others, he would have got the same words. Well done, 
good and faithful servant. We're seeing being faithful isn't about it just everything landed perfectly for you. That the whole world just rolled out in front of you and everything's perfect. No, I believe that it is about the choices and oftentimes difficult choices that we have to make to continue on. In the Bible, it says in Genesis, in the very, very beginning, Genesis chapter 8, it says, while the earth remains, as long as there's an earth here that we're walking on, and hey, we're, we're still walking on the earth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. This week here in Plano, we have some days that are 60s and 70s, and we had some days that were the 30s and the 40s. Hey, we're right in the middle of, there's cold and heat. There's summer, and we're in winter right now, but summers are coming, and before you know it, we'll be having 100-degree days, and we'll be like, oh my gosh, I wish we could go back to when it was really cold outside. I, I happen to like the cold right now. I don't like it super cold, but I like it cold right now. Of course, we still have day and we have night. And it says it will not cease. But look at the beginning of that. As long as this remains, seed, time, and harvest. In other words, we're always going to have the opportunity to plant a seed, see the time that it takes for that seed to grow and to put roots down and then the first leaves to start popping up. And then growing into the plant. And then it grows into a harvest as something that we can receive back. The same way that God gave a seed into each one of us when he gave us giftings. When he gave us abilities. When he gave us that talent. And talent was in this parable a measure of money. But it's not just money. It's also the natural talents that we have. The abilities to do things and to help people. And some people are good at building things. Some people are good with mechanics. Some people are good with cleaning and all the different. What is it that you've been given? What is it that you've been entrusted with? One of the instructors that I had at Christ for the Nations many, many years ago in the 80s, and then Lenore had him as well when she went there, and Andrew had him as a professor and as a mentor, and my daughter Jennifer currently has him. His name is Mike Massa, and he's just been a gem throughout the years, and he wrote something on social media a while back, and it it really struck me, and so I wanted to include that into this message by what he said, because it ties right into what we're looking at. This, again, is from a Facebook post that Mike Massa put. He says, I was driving by a field of corn that had just been harvested. The farmer spent two days clearing it. It burst on me that these two days of harvest had been guaranteed by his sowing a few months earlier. I'm going to read that again. It burst on me that these two days of harvest had been guaranteed by his sowing a few months prior. Think about that. These days of harvest were secured by his actions earlier. He planned it. The sowing established his future, and he planned his future by sowing in the spring. Then I considered several ideas. All of us would like a secure future. Though we cannot 100% secure every detail, we can sow time, love, service, prayer, money, labor, etc., and establish the very strong prospect of a harvest. The truth is that much of what we live in today was planted in our yesterday. Again, I'm going to read that again. The truth is that much of what we live in today was planted in our yesterday. The key To see what our future will look like will be determined by what our daily routines are now. And I highlighted this part. Whatever I'm doing now is a collision course with my future. I'm headed straight for it, whether it is weak or strong, good or bad, right or wrong, peace or chaos. Let me say that again. Whatever I'm doing now is on a collision course with my future. Continuing, I'm sowing it now in my heart routines, how I steward my time, whether I'm lazy or sloppy, diligent or diligent. Either way, I am sowing. 
eating well or not eating well, I am sowing into my future. I'm forming a road to or away from my destiny, my purpose, by what I sow today. That law of sowing and reaping is just that, a law. And I love the way he just articulated all of that, that I'm on a collision course for it. Like there's nothing that could stop it from happening. Because remember in Genesis 8, it said, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease as long as the earth remains. The earth still remains, so guess what still remains? Seed, time, and harvest. And, and that word seed, time, and harvest, it, it, it's broken down. I've heard it several different ways, that, and I think both are important. Seed time, man, there's a time for planting seeds. That's in the spring. And here we are, we're in the winter, but spring is around the corner. It's a new year. It's a time that we focus not on New Year's resolutions that are going to be here for just a few days, and then we drop it by the wayside. It's not about a new gym membership, if you will. It's about what am I going to do differently in planting seeds? The other side of that is that there's seed, comma, time, the time it takes for that seed to come together, grow some roots, and then cause that sprout to come up and harvest. We see so many times we get stuck between the seed and the harvest, and we don't see anything. We end up ripping that seed up going, eh, that didn't work. We have to be prepared for that seed, the time, the time for watering, the time for nurturing, the the time for making sure there's no weeds around that that's going to cause that to be choked out. This is a great time for us to get some strong harvests in our future. But how does a farmer do that? He doesn't arbitrarily just go out there and just throw some seeds here and throw some seeds there and got them all mixed up and just whatever comes up, comes out. No, he plans it out. In this field, in this many acres, I'm going to grow wheat. This many acres, if it was mine that I'm being a farmer, it's going to grow some green beans because I just love green beans. I got to eat green beans every day. Can't get enough green beans. I probably would have planted most of it with green beans and a little bit for everything else. But you see, what seeds you put down... Seeds you're going to get back. How ridiculous would it be for me to put some apple seeds in the ground and expect an orange tree to grow up? And yet that's what we do oftentimes with our own lives. We look at things and say, okay, I'm going to do this, but I'm expecting something different. But it goes back to that same adage that we've heard many, many times before. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. So now we're in a new year. Are you and am I going to do the same thing I did in 2020 and 2019? And you fill in the name of the the number of the other years and do the same thing and yet hope that this year is better. What about the person who who wants a retirement one day but doesn't make any steps towards having a retirement? Hoping that it's going to work out. Well, if I don't plant seeds into a ground, then that ground is just going to produce nothing but weeds. So I think many times when we find ourselves in the weeds, if you will, it's not as much about the problems that have come our way Could it be the lack of planting seeds for intentionality? Could it be the lack of sowing that I did in my life? So as we begin this year, can I suggest to you, this is the time to to set some intentionality with the seeds. To say, this is the future that I want. So I'm going to plant the app applicable seeds for the harvest that I want to be on a collision course with. So number one is to pray. Set a time to pray and not the religious prayer, but just the communing with God to say, God, good morning. Good morning, Lord. Instead of saying, oh, Lord, it's morning. Set intentionality to say, hi, I'm here. 
God, this is what's important to me today, and tell me what's important to you. Set some goals. Where do you want to see yourself end up? Where do you think God wants to see you end up in 2021? This time next year, what do you want the story to be written about your life? Cast a vision. This is where I see God wants us to do. And this is what I see I want to do in my life. And this is what I really would like. Cast the vision. If you cast a vision and it doesn't quite happen, it's better than not casting any vision. And it for sure happens. Nothing happens because we didn't cast any. Another word is legacy. Remember how I said it in the beginning that we are all created to do something? That God gave every one of us something to do. And the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you discover why you were born. Why you were born is the difference that you were intended to make. Your following through with that leaves a legacy. Now, that can be with your talents that you have. I mentioned carpentry or mechanicking or cleaning or cooking or whatever it would be. It could also be your finances, leaving a legacy. And oftentimes we see buildings at universities and, you know, hospitals and wings and all this stuff named after somebody. They're leaving a legacy because of what they gave. You see, it could be all of these different things, but you're creating a legacy, something that outlasts you. That when you stand before God and he says, hey, what did you do? That's your legacy, That is your answer to that question. So let's plan ahead. Jesus gave us the analogy that it's going to come. That we're going to be asked that question. So, hey, you got the notes for the test. You know what the questions are going to be. Be prepared. Of course, giving financially is one of those. This message isn't about giving, but it's certainly a part of it. How do you want 2021 to be? Because the Bible says when you sow money into God's kingdom, it comes back to you. So if I'm talking about sowing and being on a collision course with the harvest, and I'm not just saying you sow just so you get, that's not at all what I'm saying. But I also can tell you, you cannot outgive God. You can't give him more and him like, man, I just don't have anything else to give you. He is overwhelming and overflowing with abundance to give back. Now, this may not be the time of the year you think about charitable giving. That was a couple of months ago in November and December. But what if you planned out your giving through the entire year? Now, certainly you could give to any 501c3 or any church or any organization that you felt. And I would certainly encourage you to um, consider belong church. But it's not about asking you to give to this church. It's not, I don't, I'm not coming here with my hand out. The opposite, I'm talking about your future. And your future when it comes to finances. What's it going to be? It's based off of seed time and harvest. Everything we have in this world is based on that. So faith, we talked about that for the last several weeks. I mentioned that at the beginning of this message, is being convinced. Are you convinced that one day you'll stand before God? Are you persuaded to believe that what I'm telling you in this message from the Bible in Matthew 25 is going to be you one day? If you are, then we certainly need to look at the seeds we're sowing and the ground we're sowing in. Purpose this year. Be ahead of the curve. Be ready for it. Sow seeds and create your future. Your legacy. Let me ask it like this. Are you making a difference? Are you doing what God created you to do? Please bow your head. Legacy. Making a difference. Making a difference is one of our four core values as a church. Obviously, we talked about giving, but how about sharing your faith? 
As simple as bringing somebody, someone along with you on this journey. Maybe you want to share the URL and say, hey, I want to invite you to watch this. And hey, let's watch next week's together. Let me ask you this. Where do you find yourself today? Have you begun that journey, that faith journey? Have you accepted Christ and invited him into your life? Today can be the best day, that day that you decide, I'm going to give God a shot. Maybe you've been kicking the tires and just checking things out and like, hey, I'm not sure. And you're ready for it to be, just step out there. I invite you to take the step with me and simply pray this prayer with me. Simply repeat these words after me. Say, God in heaven, I come to you right now just as I am. Thank you for sending Jesus to pay for my sins so I don't have to. I want to begin a new relationship with you. I invite you into my life. I ask you to reveal yourself to me and lead me in a path of following you. Today, I give you my life. And the best way I know, I'm going to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe it's another time that you've prayed it, I encourage you to take the next step in that simply to text the word CONNECT to 469-289-1114. And it's simply our text communication system that we're able to communicate with you and share with you your next steps, what they could be if you would like. No one's going to bother you. No one's going to spam you. It's just simply a way we can communicate with you and wait for your reply. So I just want to pray over you as we close this message. So let's pray. Father, I pray every one of us, as we are created to make a difference, that we realize it requires us to sow seeds. It requires us to do something with that which you've entrusted us with. Lord, I thank you that by making a difference that we're leaving a legacy, that there's something that lasts beyond our life. Lord, I thank you that we can be the change that's needed in every one of the situations that we find ourselves in. Lord, we just give you all the glory and all the honor. Lord, I thank you for this message. I thank you for burning it in my heart. And Lord, I pray that no one will get tripped up over listening about money and thinking it's about the church wanting more money or wanting anything, but Lord, that we'll understand the, the truth of sowing seeds and being on a collision course with our harvest. Father, I give it all to you in Jesus' name. Now watch to the end for ways that you can connect. You can find us on social media. And if you're interested, ways to give.